So the open loop university concept, this notion that students um, don't necessarily come for a four-year confined period and then disappear, um, but maybe come, uh, go outside the university, get working experience, interesting volunteer or service experiences, uh, and maybe come back multiple times initially to complete some sort of degree, but eventually uh, maybe for some sort of continuing professional development. This, this vision came out of a study that the design school did, a course they actually ran, to challenge students to think about how, how education might change in the future. And it's a fascinating idea because at one level you'd say, um, this is really what should happen. Students should be able to go out of the university, get some real life work experience. And of course, cooperative programs and other things do this. Even at Stanford, um, more than a third of our students take five years, but they take it because they're stopping out and going and doing something else that they're involved in. Maybe it's trying their hand on entrepreneurship. Maybe it's going in an international service project. So lots of students are opting for some model like this already. I think the other thing we see is the notion of the lifelong student. This has become the reality, right? People want to come back. And in a, in a time where uh, you may not have one career in your life anymore, you may have in the old days, you had one career and maybe two or three jobs during a lifetime. Now you might have a half a dozen or a dozen jobs during a lifetime in two separate kinds of careers. Um, I think we're going to see more and more people uh, coming back. And we're trying to develop methods to support that, not only professional education, let's say in the engineering school or in medicine or uh, in the business school where things are constantly changing and people need to come back and engage in courses, often online because people are simply too busy to come physically to a place anymore. There's a great value being physically gathered, but it's also more challenging in terms of what people's work lives look like now. We've also begun to think about this as uh, something people might do later in their lives. Um, people who retire now at 65 don't think they're going to retire purely to a life of golf and fishing. Um, they're interested in what they might do. They may not want something that's a normal 9 to 5 or probably more likely 7 to 8 uh, <laughs> schedule in the day, um, but they want to experiment with this. So our, our former dean of the medical school, Phil Pizzo, has started a thing called the Distinguished Careers Institute that brings in highly accomplished people who are looking at the next phase of what they might do in their lives. Much of it will be working in nonprofits or community service. Some of it might be coming back into the academy and using their knowledge and their experience to do that. So that's another way of thinking about how do you, how do you engage in a different way of education. Whether or not the undergraduate experience will ever span over six or seven or eight years, that's harder to predict because a lot of what happens in the undergraduate experience is social growth and development of skills for leadership and collaborative work with people. And while that could be spread out, it's a little more tricky when students form very strong social bonds with their class it would make it harder to do that, but I think we'll see over time how it, how it evolves.